welcome to The Shed. So, we are continuing our new series on conspiracy theories, Genesis, creationism, flat earth, and all of that good fun stuff. We'll have a look at pseudoscience in the future, but today we are going to look at flat earth and the flat earth community and some of the things that they believe and how I can tell you that they're absolute rubbish and just with everyday observations. You don't even need to be able to see the stars or the moon to do this. Living here in the south of England, we struggle quite often with cloud. So there you go. We can't always see the stars and the heavens at night and um, the moon. But we do still get sunset. We still do get a sunrise, even if we can't see them. Now, they start with the sun. Okay, so our friendly sun, it's 93 million miles away from us. It's a big ball of helium turning into hy sorry, hydrogen, turning into helium through nuclear um, fusion. Basically what we use for a nuclear um, power. It's, it's doing what it does and it's incredible and it's what gives us life here on Earth and hopefully and possibly across the galaxy and all the universe. But that's the power of the sun. So what happens here on Earth? And this is observable here. I'm not going to use any science here. I know a lot of science, so I can't really use too much, but we will notice that every day in an easterly direction, it will start to get brighter. And every night in a westerly direction, it'll start to get darker. Now, why would that be? Why would it choose those angles? It's obviously spinning because it does this every day, every day of your life, whether you remember it or not the sun would have come up in the east and would have set in the west that's because we live on a big globe massive ball and um, we're not going to worry about how things stick to it just yet okay we will get to that but not just yet so that happens every day now recently i was in cornwall and i got to see a beautiful sunset and literally it takes no time and all of a sudden it disappeared and you can see it going down in a westerly direction and I say westerly direction because the sun doesn't actually always rise in the east and set in the west because of the tilt it's not an exact east and an exact west don't want to be caught out with my directions being ever so slightly up so that will change slightly but it's an easterly and a westerly direction, which means it could be slightly northeast or slightly southeast, depending on where you are in the world. Obviously, it's going to be slightly different if you're living in Australia to what it is if you're living in England. Now, moving on from sunsets and sunrises, we're going to look at the moon. Now, the moon. We don't see it every day. Okay, once again, getting back to the fact that we may have stars. There are places in the world which will see the sun virtually every day because they don't have cloud cover. But they're not going to see the whole, whole moon every day. Now, the moon is tidal fixed to us, which means that it rotates around the world. And it does this once every 28 days, give or take a few moments um what this means is the sun which is illuminating it can't illuminate every part of it because who knew there's a planet in the way that planet will be um earth and the reason we don't get a lunar eclipse every day is because it's not going around exactly the same way every time and covering the sun every time It'll be slightly lower, slightly higher, so therefore you don't get an eclipse. Sometimes you'll get a partial eclipse. Um, now, due to some very, very 
clever people, much more cleverer than me, they can probably use an iPad and talk at the same time, they can do calculations which will tell you when the next eclipse is and exactly where it is. Now the reason that they are able to do what they would class as basic maths that I would call mind-numbingly intelligent super maths is because they know where it is all the time because they, they know the maths or the maths as we say in this country they know where the, the moon is going to be um, so and if they tell you that on day x at a certain time which will be during the day by the way you know, it's a lunar eclipse it's going to be during the day so if they were to say this 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 use today if they were said today that at 12 15 there would be a lunar eclipse here in southampton it would happen at 12 15. get out let's see this happen i remember seeing one in london i think it was 2000 um so it's the start of the millennium and literally the whole place went dark all the birds went in they thought it was night time it was amazing like well that's a short day but it's a fact it happens it happens all around the world people see it flat earth and see it come on you're better than that um and the shadow is like i say it's formed by the planet and if you look at it it's circular it's always circular it's not flat so uh, what does that mean? It means that the planet, e.g. Earth, is forming that on the moon. Fact. Done. So, the other thing these flat earthers like to get wrong is travel, especially flights. You can't fly in the southern hemisphere. You can't get a flight. Well, you can. Just go on and Google it. You know, Johannesburg to Sydney, somewhere like that or Buenos Aires to, I don't know, somewhere in Africa. Just do it, it it's there, you'll find it eventually. Um, another thing that I don't like to understand is gravity. So, we're gonna do a little experiment with gravity. What can we, I know what we can use. Hopefully, no, that's too light. No, don't want that breaking on me. Have a beanbag. Right. Let's rearrange this show so we can do an experiment. Just a basic, simple, everyday experiment. Right. Sorry about the light. Okay, this is full. This is reasonably heavy. Yeah, we can see this. This is a iPhone cover. Not heavy at all. Okay, right, let's make sure you can see my hands. Okay, so this one, this one, my right hand has got the um, chocolate. It's bigger, would agree with that. This one, that's no good because you can't see it. You can't see it from over there, that's no good. Uh, can we see that? Just a flat lid, yeah? There's gonna be no weight to that. Can you still see that? I'm worried that we're not gonna see this. Right, let's move the camera. Now, I saw Professor Brian Cox do something like this. These are both going to fall at approximately the same time. There might be, this would one would travel ever so slightly quicker, but we're not gonna see it, okay? And it's gonna land on my beanbag. Let's get a bit of height to that. Oh, the real world of science. I said there's going to be no science in this, and you don't get more scientific than getting your um, dropping stuff, do you? Anyway, there we go. Right. So, same time. 
Yeah, these are gonna land on this bean bag at approximately the same time. Go. So. We saw that. We saw that, yep, we all saw that. That, my friends, is known as gravity. It's a thing. It's real. Believe in it. It's amazing. It's what keeps us on this little ball of rock. Now, the problem you have, I get it, is how does gravity, well, gravity keeps us here because we're on a spinning ball, okay? The ball is spinning. Now, this isn't your tennis ball, your football, or even a basketball, which is quite large. This is a globe. This is huge. This is, this is what we got to live on. This is our planet, our beautiful, incredible planet. And it rotates at approximately a thousand miles an hour. And it does this rotation over one day. Okay. Now people think of speed where well, you're not really shouldn't really think of speed. What you need to think of is acceleration, okay? Because we're at a constant speed. If we had a ball and we threw it to a person next to us on a train, which is going at 120 miles an hour, might be one of these Japanese super trains or something like that, or I don't know, wherever your train's going to, and it's traveling at a constant speed, doesn't make any difference to you. You can get up and walk up and down, once it starts to slow, you can feel that there's a change. That's because of deceleration or braking. Um, when it accelerates, you can feel it, especially if you stood up, you can feel it. Not too bad. If you're in your car and you're at the traffic lights and you're a bit of a lad and you want to race off from the traffic lights, you hold your clutch, you've got your accelerator, it goes and you come up quick on the clutch, you put your floor, foot to the floor, and you can feel the acceleration. It's acceleration that is exciting. In Formula One cars, it's the acceleration that's exciting because it's constant. Now, on an aeroplane, you don't feel the acceleration, apart from the taking off part and the landing part. You might get a little bit of turbulence up there, but generally, it's amazing, it's boring as hell, going anywhere on a plane, in my personal opinion, but doesn't take the absolute brilliance away from what is happening there. Space travel, yeah, that happened as well. Um, this was due to some incredible maths. The lady who actually done the maths for the moon landing was incredible. Imagine that, nowadays, this plot will be done on a computer, she hand read it. That's how incredible some people literally are. And yet you have dicks out there who claim that the world is flat, they don't have a clue, and they think that their maths adds up. Your maths in the flat earth community don't work. I'm no good, I'm not particularly good at maths, but it just doesn't work. Space is a thing, it's a vacuum. People don't understand vacuums. They think vacuum cleaner, and that's not really a vacuum, that's not how it works. Space doesn't suck all below. So you can't really use a vacuum cleaner and think vacuum. It was really named the last, last bleh, the wrong thing. What is NASA? Well, it's the American Space Organization. It doesn't guard anything. It's not there to look after Antarctica. We're not protected by a chief. They don't put out fake photos. Why would they? They don't make space modules to just sit somewhere, pretend that that happens. People were actually at Cape Canaveral when Apollo 11 took off, when the Challengers took off. People were there when space disasters happened. So when the space shuttles exploded, there were people there who witnessed that tragedy. And yet there are people out there who think, oh yeah, that was fate. How dare you? You know, people died. Anyway, this has been my start to why Globe Earth is a thing. Because, you know, I've lived on that for 47 years. I've seen these things every day. I have to say that 
There was a time when we probably all believed the world was flat. Then we grew up. There you go, people. Grow up. See you, pals.